In this session, we'll try and understand the power flow diagram of uh, induction motors. How the power flows from the input to the output shaft of the uh, induction motor. The power flow diagram will also give us a clue about the losses, various types of losses uh, in the induction motor, the core losses, the copper losses, the wind edge losses. We'll see. Uh, the different types of losses and how to calculate these losses. So this is a, this here represents the power flow diagram in a three phase induction motor. Uh, the power flow diagram shows on this side we have the input power. In case of a three phase, in case of a single phase induction motor, the input power will simply be vi cos pi talking about the real power of the system vi cos theta or vi cos pi as you wish uh, in case of a three phase induction motor the input power is a three phase source so it will be three uh, v phase i phase cos theta where the quantities v phase and i phase re represent the phase voltage and the phase currents uh, since we know that either the connections will be in star or in delta, so either the phase voltage will be uh, V line by root 3 or in case it's a delta connection, the, line, the phase currents will be I line by root 3. So, whether it's, star, whether it's a star connection or a delta connection, our uh, power equation the real power equation will be root 3 VL IL cos theta, where VL and IL represent the line voltage and line currents. V phase I phase represents the phase voltage and phase currents, and theta is the phase difference between the voltage and the current. So, our input power in case of a three phase circuit is root 3 VIL cos theta, uh, and in case if it is a single phase induction motor, it will simply be. Uh, vi cos theta now the first uh, so we are applying voltage to the stator of the induction motor a stator current is established so a current flows through the stator windings now depending upon the resistance of these windings there will be associated i square r losses so these i square r losses need to be calculated these i square r losses will represent the copper losses of the uh, stator of the induction motor. So these will be the copper losses taking place in the stator windings of the induction motor. That's why uh, here it's represented as the stator copper losses. So the first uh, loss in the induction motor takes place in the stator windings. First power loss is associated with the stator windings of the induction motor uh, in the form of copper losses. Because of simply of the because uh, simply because of the resistance of the windings, there is associated I square R losses, uh, which uh, contribute to the stator copper losses. Uh, the next loss in the induction motor will be associated with the core of the circuitry. Uh, we know that the core has its own resistance uh, R C that we have derived in the equivalent circuit model as well. Uh, so the current flowing through the core, the magnetizing current flowing through the core, uh, they will be associated with it, its own losses. These core losses are actually the eddy current losses and the hysteresis losses that we have already studied previously, the eddy current losses and the hysteresis losses. Uh, so together, the eddy current losses and the hysteresis losses form up the iron losses or what are known also as the core losses of the uh, core losses of the machine. Uh, the stator copper losses, we need to note here that in case if it's a single phase induction motor, uh, the stator copper losses will be only through one winding of the induction motor. Whereas in case if it's a three phase induction motor, there will be stator copper losses in each phase of the uh, wind, in each phase of the induction motor. That means our stator copper loss in that in that case will be 
thrice I square R, where I will represent the current flowing through the stator and through the stator windings, and R will represent the resistance of the stator windings. The core losses are the AD current losses and the hysteresis losses. Hysteresis losses we have already uh, studied that it's because of the magnetic saturation. Uh, there is not a uh, once we magnetize. Uh, we note that uh, hysteresis losses. Uh, uh, once we magnetize the core of the uh, machine, the path and because of the alternating uh, nature of the magnetizing force here, the path it traces uh, during uh, reversal process is not the same that it has traversed uh, during the, the first stage. Uh, that means here actually that uh, once we give a magnetic force to a material the domains are aligned in one direction uh, once the magnetizing force is reversed the domains all of the domains do not reverse uh, in the same manner as they were aligned uh, in this particular direction uh, the extra energy that we have to spend to uh, re realign all the domains to their uh, initial state uh, is referred to as the hysteresis losses uh, whereas the case of eddy current loss is concerned, we know that eddy current is uh, eddy current is established in the core because of the magnetic field associated around the core of the machine. Uh, uh, we can here say actually that because of the magnetic net magnetic field existing, eddy current begins to flow through uh, the machine elements. The uh, this current is not useful for us. This current will trace path through different uh, magnetic uh, materials of the machine, and uh, because of owing to the resistance of these machines, owing to the resistance of these elements, whatever losses, whatever I square R losses are associated with uh, this AD current will result in AD current losses. So that's about the core loss of the machine. Uh, here exactly not like a tra like a transformer we do not actually have a core here uh, we have a stator and we have a rotor and uh, the magnetic field is linked between the stator and the rotor uh, and uh, because of the magnetic nature uh, whatever losses are associated uh, in the form of hysteresis or in the form of eddy current uh, together some of the core losses of the system uh, the power that's now available at this point that is actually the input power minus the eddy current losses or we can say the copper losses in the stator the stator copper losses minus the core losses uh, that's the iron losses This power is referred to as the air gap power. That's actually the power that will be linked or that will be associated with the rotor is the air gap power. The rotor will be fed with the air gap power. The rotor will be receiving the air gap power. It will be receiving uh, this much amount of power. So this power is referred to as the air gap power. That's actually available between the air gap uh, between the stator and rotor there is an air gap so whatever amount of power is available at this point is referred to as the air gap power so now the power that will get linked with the rotor is the air gap power uh, we can calculate it simply from the input power minus the stator copper loss minus the core losses uh, now the rotor has its uh, the rotor windings have their own resistance whether it's a wound round induction motor or a square cage induction motor, whether it be rotor windings or rotor bars, conducting bars, they will offer some resistance to the flow of current. Uh, the amount of uh, power, the current that's flowing through the rotor square times the rotor resistance, that's the 
high square r losses associated with the rotor circuitry will contribute to the rotor copper losses so the power now that will be available at the before the at the shaft of the induction motor will be uh, air gap power minus the rotor copper losses this power is known as the peak converted power so peak converted is actually the power that is available to the shaft of the rotor it's simply the air gap power minus the rotor copper losses so uh, in short the converted power that is the power available to the available to the shaft of the rotor is the input power minus the stator copper losses minus the core losses minus the rotor copper losses so copper loss and co copper losses are because of the resistance of these windings and core loss are because of the magnetic nature of this circuit now we know that uh, because of the rotation uh, and the slipping arrangements there will be a uh, rotation of the rotor and the slipping arrangements that will be having uh, we'll have some more losses uh, these losses will are simply uh, known as uh, known as the friction losses or the windage losses uh, they are due to the rotating nature of the rotor uh, there will be certain friction and we have also brush and slipping arrangement uh, so there will be some other losses Th those are known as the windage losses so we sum them up together the friction losses and the windage losses the friction loss and the windage loss are just uh, are because of the rotating nature of the rotor uh, now apart from this whatever types of losses are there we refer to them as the stray losses or the miscellaneous losses these can be simply in the form of uh, heat uh, generated so the output power that will be now delivered to the load will be uh, p out that will be now p in minus the stator copper losses minus the core losses minus the rotor copper losses minus the friction losses minus the windage losses and my, uh, some other miscellaneous losses so subtracting all of this from the input powers all of these losses from the input power we will get the output power uh, the output power can also be uh, derived using the torque and uh, speed equation of the shaft of the rotor it's simply given as the torque of the load uh, multiplied by the rotate the speed of rotation that's t tau into omega so these this is the power flow diagram uh, of an induction motor uh, whether it's a three phase induction motor or a single phase induction motor in case of a single phase induction motor the input power will be vi cos theta in case of a three phase induction motor the input power will be root 3 vt il cos theta where vt and il are the line voltage and line currents uh, the first loss will be because of the resistance of the stator winding that's the stator copper losses uh, then because of the core the magnetic nature of the circuitry there will be eddy current loss and hysteresis loss known as the co core losses in together uh, because of the rotor resistance uh, there will be the rotor copper losses and because of the rotating nature of the rotor there will be certain there will be friction and there will also be windage losses we sum them up together as p friction and windage losses there will be some other miscellaneous losses in the circuitry known as the stray losses so subtracting all these losses from the input power we get the output power that's the actual power that gets delivered to the load that actually uh, is converted to mechanical energy uh, in the next session uh, using these power flow diagrams we will derive the we will try to understand how using the power flow diagram and using the equivalent circuit of the induction motor uh, we'll derive uh, the different types of we'll derive the equation for stator copper losses for the core losses for the rotor copper losses uh, for the air gap power and for the peak converted power